So uh, welcome to the uh, BC Regional Science and Technology Network video series on access to capital and, and, and some tips on how you might uh, start to pitch your, uh, your business ideas and find investors. Today we're going to cover the perfect investor pitch and we have with us Tom O'Flaherty. And Tom uh, has a background uh, that we would all like to have. He's been a founder, he's been a product uh, builder and developer, he has been an investor and he's been an advisor. Um, so we're really lucky to have him here and he's been involved in some products that you probably know like Maximizer and Simply Accounting which have both done very well out of British Columbia. So, so Tom, you know, investor presentations are, are a pretty common thing that a lot of companies have to do. Um, what's behind w what you want to talk about today and how do you do the perfect investor pitch? First of all, on the first slide I'm, I'm stating some of the basic assumptions and that is, is that we're talking about uh, an angel type investment so these are uh, younger companies that are looking for perhaps tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars and they're going to be asking for that in, in one of the high pressure forums that we have where they've got maybe five minutes at the most 15 minutes to make their pitch. So that's the scenario that I'm talking about. Now on the next slide I've got what is a typical uh, topic list for these presentations. And I'm not going to pretend that this is anything new or wonderful. If you look at any of the angel form recommendations, you'll find this list of topics as those that they must cover. And, and again, they've either got five minutes or 15 minutes in order to do this. Let me just mention briefly what these topics relate to in case somebody is watching this that hasn't been to one of these forums yet. Uh, first of all, the market. Uh, who out there on planet Earth has the problem that you claim to be able to solve? Um, what's the size of the market? Are, th are there a lot of those people or companies? Uh, who's involved with you? Uh, do you have a co-founder? Um, do you have anybody else in your company? Do you have anybody advising you? Um, what does your solution look like and is there competition? Um, how will you make money? What's your business model? How will you get customers to give you money that you can run your business with? Um, how are you getting to market? In other words, how would those um, customers expect to buy your product or solution? Uh, what are your financial projections? What do you expect to grow to in revenue and profits over the next, say, five years? And finally, liquidity. Your investor is going to want to uh, get their money back at some point and get back a whole lot more. So how are you going to provide that? So, uh, like you've said, Tom, this is all pretty boilerplate. Uh, most angel networks have uh, uh, the same list that they want you to cover. Um, tell us a little bit about your secret sauce and how to do it better. The, the secret sauce I have is in the sequence of these topics and the emphasis that you should place upon them. But the notion is, is that a lot of uh, founders work from their comfort zones. We all do. And they're most comfortable talking about their, their solution or their product and how it works. The point here is that if you don't convince an investor that you've got a market, that there are a lot of people out there that are willing to buy a product that solves a problem that they have, they're simply not going to have an appetite for listening to your solution or how you do it. So you have to cover those topics first. And then finally, investors at the end of the day invest in people more than they invest in technology. The right people will make the right things happen somehow. And so you need to be able to demonstrate that you're not a solo act, hopefully, that you've got at least a co-founder that complements your talents, and ideally you've got advisors, maybe a small board of directors that are also participating with you. So when somebody's preparing for their angel form and they want to define their market, what are the key considerations? So first of all, who is the target market? And this could either be an individual or an organization that has a problem. And this could be a present company accepting males with thinning hair, uh, large manufacturers, litigation lawyers. So you need to be able to define the target clearly enough that you can actually go find some of these people and speak to them. Second is, what exactly is their problem? So if this, if this would be, say, uh, large manufacturers, maybe their scheduling problems are running their costs of manufacturing up to the point where the plant may close and manufacturing may move to China. That's a big problem. Um, I came across one yesterday where litigation lawyers are having to get large files to various participants quickly and securely. And uh, presently, they're copying those files onto um, DVDs and couriering them across the country through snowstorms and whatever. And so clearly, if you don't get your material 
where it should get before a trial and you're ill-prepared for a trial, that's a big problem. So, the, so that question is, is what is their problem and, and is it a big problem or simply a nuisance? And generally people won't spend money or time and trouble on issues that are a nuisance, but they will on large problems. And then you finally got to say, what are they doing now? Are they able to solve it with a competitor or is yours the only solution that really provides a plausible solution to their problem? Okay, Tom. So uh, having attended a lot of angel forums, one of the, the biggest mistakes I've seen is when people are trying to explain their market size. They've said things like, well, my product works for the entire English-speaking world, and if I can reach 1% of them, then we're all going to get rich. Don't you want to invest? And the investors obviously uh, don't feel like there's a lot of detail um, to back that up. There's a lot of evidence. So how do you really go about determining your market size so that it's uh, uh, effective and appealing to an investor? I think the problem there, Dan, is that people think that they can do simple mathematics, like multiply a big number by a small percentage and, and thus verify a market. Um, but you touched on the issue there, and that is what is behind that number. I'm not sure there's any magical way of doing that. Certainly in the, uh, in the old days, I would head for the reference library, and if it's uh, small to medium manufacturers we're talking about, I would try and find out how many of those there are in my market area, which might be Canada or more likely um, the U.S. Nowadays, of course, the internet makes that uh, a lot easier. But what you have to do is, regardless of whether you're multiplying this by 2% or 1% or whatever, it's defining really how many of these likely um, suspects are out there on planet Earth. And the investor can do the simple multiplication. So I think the mistake there is to assume there's something magical about multiplying a big number by a small number and getting a, a decent number. Okay, thanks Tom. And if you're interested in learning more about market validation, we actually have a whole video dedicated to that. So look for that uh, online as well. Uh, but in the meantime, Tom, maybe you could tell us uh, how much is enough when you're trying to explain your market? I, I guess the answer to this is the old answer, how long is a piece of string? What you really want to do is to get your potential investor to the point where they accept the fact that there are a large number of people that, can, that have a problem you can solve. And, and now they're almost um, begging or very keen to hear you uh, talk about your product, but not yet. There's one more thing to cover before we do that. And, and that is, is that investors tend to invest in people as much as they invest in products and technology. So before you get into talking about what it is you do and how you do it, you need to talk about uh, who else is involved with you. Uh, investors are wary of, of solo acts, and so even if you have supreme confidence uh, in your ability, typically technical founders ought to have a business-oriented partner that can handle all the business issues that come up. And do you have an advisory board or directors, and what are their credentials? So another slide that covers these points is very important before you start talking about your product. Okay, Tom, so we've, we've covered the market, um, we've covered this, the size of the market, and we've covered the management and the people. Um, can the founders get on with the rest of their pitch now? Yes, this is where the founders now can be very comfortable talking about their product. But again, I, I caution you in these high-pressure type uh, presentations. At this point, you can tell what your product does, and you can tell how it relates to competition. But I'd be very careful not to dive into the technical details of how it does it, unless the investor asks, and my guess is that in these high-pressure, short, time-framed uh, presentations, they're not likely to ask that. But by all means, at this point, you, you now have the right to say what it does and, and why it's better than the competition. Okay, Tom, so now we've, we've established the market, and we've established the problem, and, you know, the uh, opportunity in the people, and we've compared it to our competitive market. Um, what's left to be covered? So in the time we have available, Dan, I'm not going to dive into the others except the last one. And that's the, uh, the liquidity event, or the M&A, or the, the exit, however you want to, uh, to phrase it. You may be in this uh, for life, but your investor isn't. Investors want to be able to place their money in a company like yours, and to get it back, uh, ideally multiplied by five or ten times, within some reasonable period of time. And, and five years seems to be a, a time frame that we all think about, even though many of us know that it could be a lot longer. So you really should cover this point off. How are you going to get the investor's money back to them? And it's unlikely that you know precisely, but at least to include this slide, 
gives them some comfort. And the more you can talk about how you expect to return their money, uh, the better an ending it will be to this sort of a presentation. Okay, thanks for that, Tom. Um, so I think it's important for, for the people watching this video to remember that um, uh, if you do this in the right order and, and you give the investors what they're looking for first, which is knowing that there is a problem that you can solve, how big that problem is, um, and what the size of that market is, and who the people are that are involved, um, you're going to set up your pitch better. And, and, and don't jump right to your product, which is so tempting for most technology companies. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, and please look for the rest of our series of videos on access to capital and helping you get your company ready for investment.